So in this video, we're going to look at um, double integrals and polar coordinates. Now, first of all, let me introduce you quickly, reintroduce you to polar coordinates. You've seen them before. X equals R co cos theta and Y equals R sine theta. These are known as the polar coordinates. Essentially, what's going on is, is a change of variable. So what you're doing is instead of we, we go from the X, Y coordinate system to the R theta coordinate system. So uh, basically, um, the way this works is uh, where do you actually use these things is where you have circles or curves. In other words, anything that involves lots and lots of X squares and Y squares, that's the best place to use double integrals. Um, sorry, that's the best place to use uh, polar coordinates. Y is obvious because X plus Y squared, X squared plus Y squared under this transformation actually becomes R squared cosine squared theta plus R squared sine squared theta, which is equal to R squared into cos squared theta plus sine squared theta. But that's equal to one, so that's equal to R squared. So what happens is that X squared plus Y squared under this transformation boils down to just R squared, okay? So, um, and of course, theta goes bit, uh, for the whole, for a full circle, for instance, theta goes between zero and two pi. So as long uh, if if theta is between zero and two pi, a circle with any suppose um, suppose we're looking at the circle x squared plus y squared equals four, which means circle with radius two, your r is between zero and of course two. So what you've got is your double integral. Uh, if the region of uh, that you're integrating over the region R, for instance, okay. So here, I mean, now let's get to the double integral. So you have some region R, and you're integrating over this region R, where the region R happens to be, okay, the circle. Okay, here it is. For instance, the circle with radius, and the one I've drawn is x squared plus y squared equals four, for instance. Okay, so the radius of the circle is two. Now, this region R can easily be represented by the, as I've shown here, 0 to 2 pi, 0 to 2, uh, pardon me, so 0, uh, 0 to 2, and then you'll say f of R cos theta, R sine theta, okay, and we're doing, this is 0 to 2 is dr, and there is an R here as well, dr d theta. So this R before you get confused, where did I get this R from? This is actually, there is a derivation for it, okay? There is a derivation for it is that is when you actually do the uh, substitution or change of variable, you discover that it actually becomes R dr d theta. Right, let's look at this example. So here we have uh, basically uh, 3x plus 4 by squared dA. The region R is the upper half plane bounded by the circles x squared plus y squared equals 1 and x squared plus y squared equals 4. Very easy to draw these, so what we're looking at is upper half plane means um, up here, so we're looking at x squared plus y squared equals one. So that's x squared plus y squared equals one. And then this is x squared plus y squared equals four, uh, which basically gives you a radius two and radius one. So basically you're, you're actually doing this. So this is the region R that we are going to be integrating over. So this integral, 3x plus 4y squared, the way this works out is as follows. So here, um, our region R is going to be represented as follows. Theta is clearly between 0 and 2 pi. Uh, well, let's be careful. Th uh, this is uh, uh, 0 to pi, pardon me, because you're going from, you see, you're going from uh, 0 right up to pi and back to 2 pi will be the whole circle. So we're looking at only the half circle here. So your angle therefore will be 0 to pi. Now on the other hand, um, your radius, your radius starts at radius 1 to 2. So this is very easily done through your r is between 1 and 2 in fact. So now we're ready to actually go into this. Remember x is going to be r cosine theta and y is r sine theta. So our integral therefore becomes 0 to pi, 1 to 2, the 3 times, 3 times r cosine theta plus 4 r squared sine squared theta, okay, and r dr d theta.
okay and then you just continue to integrate that and that's just going to be equal to in fact um, 0 to pi 7 cosine theta after substitution the limits sine squared theta d theta and that just comes out to be um, 15 pi over 2. You can check that. Right. This is a, another category of questions that, of course, um, uses polar coordinates. This requires, of course, your knowledge of polar curves, which you would have covered in Calculus 2, I hope, or at some point earlier. In any case, uh, the problem is quite simple. Here, uh, in a, to use a double integral to compute means that we will not, we're not calculating a volume. So all we have to do is actually calculate r d r d theta in this manner. And there has to be, of course, um, your radius clearly for the for uh, the one of the loops is going to go from zero where it begins right up to cosine two theta. Okay, so there's no uh, argument as to what is smaller because uh, remember um, uh, r. Uh, starts at zero and can go only up to some value. So zero to cos two theta, and then we have theta between uh, for the for the loop uh, that we're looking at. For instance, one of the loops. Um, actually, if if I were to draw this, um, this is the loop we're looking at. And in fact, if we look at the angles, uh, because it's cosine of two theta, this will go from theta equals, this is going to be pi over 4 clearly, okay, and this is theta equals minus pi over 4. So that means that what we're doing is we're integrating from minus pi over 4 to pi over 4. Okay, and that should um, give us the area we're looking for. That turns out to be quite simple, in fact, and it's going to be just uh, a half integral minus pi over 4 to plus pi over 4 and it's going to be cos, cos squared 2 theta. Oops. So it's cos squared 2 theta d theta. And when you integrate that, it turns out that that's equal to pi over 8. You can check that. Okay, just in case. Um, now, of course, if you don't understand polar curves, you will not really know what I meant by this diagram. You'll have to look at a different video for polar curves. I haven't... Um, so anyway, let's move on. All right, let's uh, do this one more example, which is find the volume of the solid that lies under the paraboloid z equals x squared plus y squared, uh, above the xy plane and inside the cylinder x squared plus y squared equals 2x. So the cylinder x squared plus y squared equals 2x, if we start with that, um, basically, uh, basically what happens is if I complete the square, we're looking at, I mean, the, the bottom of this, uh, where it intersects the xy plane would be the circle. So that circle, uh, in fact, would be um, in the xy plane. So we're really talking about x squared plus y squared minus 2x equals 0. And if you complete the square, that becomes x minus 1 squared plus y squared equals 1. So what you're really talking about is uh, radius with center 1, in fact. Oh, uh, sorry, center 1 and radius 1. So, so basically, you're looking at this circle. Okay, this is in the xy plane. So here's your x and here's your y. So you're looking at you're looking at this circle. Okay, so this is um, the solid above this. So this is the region D that we're looking at. Uh, okay, so now in order to represent this in polar coordinates, we will substitute x equals, of course, r cos theta, and y equals r sine theta. So if I were this is just to visualize it. Now let's go back to our original equation, this one. So if I substitute these in here, I get r squared equals um, 2 r cosine theta, which implies that r is in fact 2 cos theta. So that's what I've got. Now that's the boundary of this circle. This is r equals 2 cos theta. And of course the it starts at, the radius starts at 0 and goes up to this. So your radius is between 0 and 2 cosine theta. And of course, we're looking at an entire, the full circle. Uh, but in this case, we have to be careful because your theta cannot be 0 to 2 pi. 
Yeah, okay. You have to be careful about this because the, the, the radius um, of this particular um, region, remember, so we're looking at is, if you're looking at it from this point of view, remember, your theta is going to go from minus pi over 2, okay, to pi over 2. Those are the angles that we're looking at because it's not a full circle with the radius center 0, 0. So that means that your range of values is minus pi over 2 to pi over 2, okay? So you need to be careful about this. Um, now, of course, this means um, we've got our angles sorted and I've got, we've got our radius sorted, 0 to 2 cosine theta, and that leaves, what are we integrating over? Now, uh, remember, it's under the, uh, the uh, it's uh, bounded, I mean, it's under the paraboloid. So your z, the, the z that you're given is x squared plus y squared. So z is equal to x squared plus y squared, which under this polar coordinates becomes just r squared. So we have, in other words, r squared, times r dr dr first and d theta next which becomes r cubed really and when we integrate that we end up with minus pi over 2 pi over 2 and we're going to get cosine 4 cosine power 4 theta d theta okay and that um, boils down to just after integration and you can do that yourself. It's a bit complicated, but nothing anyone doing calculus 3 should not be able to manage. So that's equal to 3 pi over 2, and that will be the volume we're looking for.